Hello, Skill Incarnate back with the second episode of our new Project Zomboid series. Today's tutorial is hopefully, if I can find a saw, going to be on base defense and maybe some we basic weapons crafting. Oh, sweet! Okay, our, our tutorial is definitely on base defense and weapons crafting. I just need an axe now. A oh, machete will do, in a pinch. So, we were lucky. We managed to find an, a saw. And, oh, an auger. We've actually come and, come and got a lot of useful stuff. We've got some nails. Excellent. We're going to need those. So I'm just a hammer, we've got one of those already. So what we're going to need is, now we have a means to make some planks, we're going to need some nails in order to start securing this place. Ah, and a sledgehammer, excellent. We're also going to need that. So, depending on what I found today, that was going to determine what the tutorial was going to be. If I couldn't find a saw and, and so forth, uh, I was going to actually do a tutorial on finding those items. Um, but it appears that we have everything we need. So we've got a box of nails. These are nail gun nails. But with a hammer in our inventory, we can right click and change those, revert them to regular nail nails. Which we're going to need at the moment. So what we're going to do today is, number one, we're going to go out and chop some wood. Number two, we're going to make some weapons because at the moment we're we're short uh, a bit of uh, a, a, a couple of uh, things, which is our our wooden stakes, which are a mainstay of my arsenal. Okay, so we've got a box of nails, but everything we need now, we just need to get some wood. So let's go do that now. We've actually got some zombies here to the north. Um, I'm going to go and have a look inside and see if I can find something we can fashion a weapon out of. I have a box cutter, but uh, that's not really going to last. It's a makeshift knife. I think I saw some planks. So there's some planks. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to make wooden stakes. To make wooden stakes, you need a plank. Right click on the plank and with a saw and a knife in your inventory. So we've got a saw, we just picked one up and we've got a machete in our inventory. We can make wooden stakes. I'm making one now and uh, as you can hear, we've actually got some zombies at our door. So just in time, let's uh, let's... There we go. Perfect timing. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what we're going to do now is use our wooden stakes to clear this area. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. But let's see how we go. So I'm trying to trying to clear this area because I want to get to the woods. There we go. And hopefully, sometimes zombies will drop uh, useful items, such as an axe or a machete. We have a machete already. But that's not going to last long if we start cutting trees down. It's going, it's going to eventually break on us. I'm going to keep those flashlights because we can make makeshift silences out of those. So I'm going to cut these trees here now with the machete, and hopefully. 
appears we've got some zombies in the trees. So once we cut down some more trees, we'll be able to make some more wooden stakes. don't want to waste our the durability of our good weapons on these guys. So we're going to shank them. There we go. Some chewing gum. It's always good. And we'll go here. We've got a full blown horde in the trees here. So I'm very glad I found those planks inside the warehouse. Because I don't think I could be fighting this many guys without. Them. Without weapons. Alright, that's it. Let's check these guys for anything useful. Maybe an axe if we're lucky. No. A baseball bat. Excellent. We'll need that. So now we have a weapon in case we do need to fight the zombies. I'm going to try and get six plank, uh, six uh, wooden logs. So you're probably wondering what I've got in the terms of a backpack. I've got an Alice pack. Now uh, that Alice pack is provided by a mod. Um, suggested by my good friend uh, LZ Bravo, who, um, who, if you've checked my earlier videos, has played a couple of games with me on Steam of Project Zomboid. He also runs his own uh, Project Zomboid server. And it basically provides you a backpack which is approximately double the biggest backpack that you can get in the vanilla game, and also bigger than most of the ones you can get in the Hydrocraft mod. So I am cheating a little bit, but it's going to make these tutorials a bit faster, so I can get this, uh, get these supplies to base, and get this, uh, this uh, tutorial going a little faster for us. Okay, Colt Python 45 caliber revolver. Quite a uh, quite a nice little package. Now, what I'm not going to make this episode into is an episode on weapons crafting. I am going to show you how to make the wooden stakes. Um, I've already showed you how to make them from from using a plank, so I'll show you how to cut down the the logs. So the first thing we need to do before we even worry about fortifying the outer base is knock this staircase out. Now you can do that if you have a sledgehammer. We're going to make this window our exit point. But to do that, we're going to need some, some wooden sheets. Sorry, wooden sheets. Some, some sheet ropes. So let's grab some from a zombie outside. You may not you may not be able to do this if you don't have a if you don't have a sledgehammer. We've been incredibly lucky where we've actually found a sledgehammer on our second day. Um, it, it can happen, and your best chance to do find that and, and your high value tools is in the warehouse, which is the exact reason why I decided to settle here. Um, it, it, made it, it makes it a bit harder on food, but it makes it very easy for me to do, do these tutorials with you. Because most of the tools you're going to find here in these crates. OK. 
Okay, is there a sledgehammer? <coughs> Excuse me. So before we smash those stairs out, we obviously will need to make a way to get up to the top floor. We're going to do that by adding a sheet rope. So you can, on, on any dead zombies you saw, you can right click on any of the clothes that they're wearing. You see how I'm wearing these pants? You right click on those and select craft sheet rope and you'll turn the, the clothing into a rope. We've got four. With, with the sheet ropes, you need to have one rope for every story that you want to go up. So this is a two story house. We need two sheet ropes. I've got four. You also need one nail. These are very cheap. A single nail and sheet ropes for however high you want to go. In our case, two stories equals two sheet ropes. There we go. We now have a way of getting in. Now the problem is that the, the zombie horde down here actually smashed this door last night while I was asleep. And thankfully they've wandered off, but um, we need to plug that up. So that's going to be our next challenge. So we're going to smash this staircase. So there's now only one way to get in. go. So I'm going to make it easier to get in later on. But just for now, just for the moment, we have one way in to get to the top floor, which is a rope which only we can climb. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to dump my sledgehammer here because it is very heavy. I'm going to go and get some more wood. We're going to start plugging up these these entrances. We need to start need to start making this secure. I need lots of wood for that. So we're going to take our machete, and hopefully our machete does not break before we're able to uh, to sort this out. We're now tired, so we're going to have to have a rest. But before we do, I'm going to cut down six more trees. Sorry, uh, three more trees and get six more wood. This is a bit tedious, but um, wood is a very, a very useful resource in this game. It is uh, a source of weapons and a means of building virtually every structure in the game. And you will need as much as you can carry of this. So we've got lots of wood. Unfortunately, what we don't have is a lot of these wooden stakes. So that wood that I just cut down, I'm going to fashion into some stakes. Because as you can see, well, again, that, that was a bit of a bug in the game. I hope he didn't bite me then. No. Take that worm. Any food is good food. So while we're collecting all this wood, let's talk a little bit about base selection. Um, I did cover this in a earlier tutorial in my first series in Phoenix, but um, I just wanted to go over the reasons why I selected the, the warehouse. Um, the, the first thing that I look for in a building is location. The building has to be on the outskirts of town. So when I say the outskirts, the building has to be close enough to the edge of town that I can get into town within a day's run. But it also needs to be far enough away so that the zombie hordes aren't excessive. So where we are now is probably not really far enough out of town. 
but because we're doing this tutorial series and I need a lot of these tools early on, that's why we've chosen this. It's not generally my first pick. There is a farmhouse out of town a bit further here. It's probably about uh, oh, two hours run from here, game time, and that is really remote. Um, that has a lot of resources and it's actually a better location than this. Um, and then what you can do is just run in here and get what you need and actually go back to the farm. Um, let's just check out what we've got in the way of food. We've actually got quite a bit by the look of it. Yeah, so this this fridge is very well stocked. We're going to have a lot of food, but this is going to run out. We are eventually going to run out of food and eventually going to run out of water as well. So now we've got lots of logs. Let's start barricading this up. So I'm, I'm not going to do everything in this tutorial, but I'm going to show you the the basic way to to get a building secure so this is our first problem this here we're gonna make a log wall so to make a log wall we'll need some ripped sheets to rip sheets again you use clothing which you can find on any dead zombie they're everywhere right click on any item of clothing select rip sheets you'll get eight rip sheets per item of clothing we only need four you need four logs. So what I do is I'll cut down my trees and place the logs on the ground. There's four logs at my feet. Right click on where you want to create a wall. Build. Wall. And log wall. So to get this build menu up, you need to have the hammer in your inventory. And nails, depending on what you want to build. So to build this, we only need a hammer. We don't need any nails. Because the, instead of using nails, we're using the rip sheets to hold the, the logs together. There you go. So we've now blocked that entrance with a log wall. The next thing we want to do is start focusing on this entrance here. And we've actually got a bit of a problem in that we've got some zombies. So we might actually, if I've got any leftover logs, I do. Excellent. It seems like they're going to get the drop on me. So unfortunately we've got quite a sizable zombie horde to our south. I'll try and steer clear of those guys for the moment. I'm going to try and saw up these, create these planks into wooden stakes. So one thing I should mention, to make wooden stakes, you need a plank, you need a saw, you need a knife, or in our case a machete, and you also need a carpentry skill of one. Now, the carpentry skill we have is three because we're a carpenter by trade. That's, that's the, the trait that I took. If you're not a carpenter, then you would still follow my advice, but you would barricade the building before making the wooden stakes. So we've got six wooden stakes. If you're not a carpenter, there's other makeshift weapons you can make. And what I'm going to do is actually go into a tutorial on weapons crafting. That will be, af after I get enough uh, supplies to survive, Because obviously I, I need to try and stay alive to, to do these tutorials, but here we go. There we go, we just get rid of these guys. Pack of chewing gum. Alright, so on the second day you really kind of want to walk around the circumference of your base and try and get rid of any zombies that are too close. Now, I wouldn't fight a pack of these zombies barehanded. Probably not a good idea. But with this wooden stake, easily doable. You can see how we're just sneaking up to the, the edge of the horde and we're just letting them come to us in groups of one or two. And you can see, it's obviously a lot of them, but um, you can see this approach works. We're just chipping away at them one at a time. 
I'm not trying to fight every single zombie in the area, and the ones to the south there, they're not too, too, they're far enough away where they're not an immediate concern. I do need to get rid of them, but let's remove this broken glass and this here. And we're going to dump our, we'll dump our log here. Now, fortunately, I am, I am pretty tired. I've got exertion. I am carrying a little bit much. Unfortunately, that is just a, a side effect of having to carry so much stuff. I'm going to try and grab these logs. I'm also going to look for a tree branch because I'm going to show you an alternative if you don't have access to carpentry one, as in a carpentry skill of one or more. We've actually got our baseball bat here, so that's going to that'll be fine. So that took care of him quite nicely. So if you don't have a carpentry skill, um, there's plenty of weapons you can use at the start of the game. You can use regular kitchen knives. You can use even butter knives. You can see I'm carrying a butter knife. I'm using a box cutter, actually. was using a box cutter. That will work fine in a pinch. Got that. So we've got eight logs. So what we're looking to do is to try and secure our base. We're going to use these logs, cut them up into planks, and we're going to use them to barricade our base. So these particular doors aren't very strong. Five logs there. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to destroy this outright. And replace it with a, a log wall. There we go. So we've got some logs here. We'll just chuck them on the ground. Grab one log here. Build our log wall. Again, we're not using any nails in order to do this. Beautiful. So that is a complete replacement for our, our, our door. We're going to use the planks that we got from breaking the door down in order to barricade this window. Not an ideal solution, but um, it will do for now. So to barricade a window, you will need to use the um, use the build menu. So if, again, you'll need a hammer. You'll need at least one nail to each per each plank that you use to barricade, and you'll need some planks. So you can use four planks to get the strongest barricade. Let's just put one down for now. There we go, we barricaded a window. So this, this entrance I'm not worried about, this is really secure. Let's, let's put a barricade on this window. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is to eventually just add a little wall around here to make this really secure. But let's just cut up these. Uh, let's cut up these logs. We're actually we're out of logs again, so we're gonna have a bit of a rest. So just uh, just get my character back to back to fighting strength. There we go. 
Now why are we still ah still over encumbered? There we go. So I'm going to put some of these tools away because um, our character is overweight by a fair amount. I've oh, got the sheet ropes, that's why. I'll put these down here for now. I'm going to use those in a moment. We need some more. We need some more wood. So let's uh, let's sort that out. You can see our machete is is starting to to wear down a bit. Probably going to need to look for an axe. Now you can hear there's some zombies coming. So I just want to try and hopefully, uh, too late, we have actually pissed them off, which I was trying not to do. But thankfully, we have our wooden stakes. Okay, we'll just uh, take these guys out so we can safely pick up that wood. And this is why you always, obviously, it's common sense, but um, the first bit of wood you get, you want to try and probably turn it into wooden stakes so that you have a means to defend yourself. Uh, I am going to do a full episode on weapons crafting. But we need somewhere safe to sleep. So, Going back, um, I did actually lose lose focus of what I was saying around base defense and selection. Um, I did mention why I chose this in terms of uh, proximity to town, but the the criteria I use apart from location for a base is the base has to be multi-story, and that's so that we can do precisely what we've done when we find a sledgehammer, knock out all the means to access the second floor. Um, also, in terms of multi-story bases, you can also make a, a farm on the roof. And in our case, we actually have a, a warehouse with a with a nice big sized roof, and that's precisely what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to farm that. We're going to turn that into a farm. Let's dump these logs on the ground. I'll do for now. Climb up on the second floor. Oh, what I actually did not do was get some more. Um, get some more sheets. So you always want to have a, when you have a multi-story building, have more than one way in. So there's location, there's multi-story. Um, I always try and pick a building which has lots of storage. And in our case, even on the second floor, we've got a couple of filing cabinets, a desk and this box. Um, we can start moving all of these crates up here if we want to have additional storage. I'm going to create an entrance here. Make sure I've got some nails. Entrances are via sheet ropes are very inexpensive to make. One nail. There we go. So we now have two ways into the base. We've knocked the second floor out, and this is completely inaccessible from, from the ground floor. We are very safe in here. So there's one last thing I want to do, and that's to make an interior entrance. So I've actually carelessly left my um, my sledgehammer downstairs. Let's go and retrieve it. 
So the problem that you can obviously see is that I have um, I, I have to climb outside and then come around here to, to get in and out. It's a bit silly, but um, so remember where I've actually put my sledgehammer. Yeah, I put it. There we go. So that's a bit silly in terms of uh, I, I have to actually go the long way. What I really want to do is create a rope ladder down here. Now, you can't do this unless you've got a sledgehammer. So you may actually need to run the long way around and climb up via a rope like this. But because we do have a sledgehammer, I'm going to show you how to do that. And that's going to be to place a wooden fence here. So we've got some, we've got some logs. Let's saw those up. Now we're going to build a wooden fence because a fence will let us jump over and actually climb down. You want to be careful when you're doing this because if you fall and break your legs, you're going to be stuck in this place for a very long time. Now at the start of the game, when you don't have a lot of actually stuff to, in, in terms of food and water, that can be a death sentence. So with at least two planks in your inventory and some nails, right click and select build. And we want to select fence and wooden fence. This is the cheapest fence to build. And it's uh, it's fine as far as a, um, a mean. It's just a means for us to to attach a uh, to attach a rope. So you need two planks, three nails, and a carpentry skill of two. Obviously, if you don't have a carpentry skill of two, you're not going to be able to do this. But um, if you don't have that, you can still use a regular window like what I was doing and just attach a sheet rope. This is pure convenience. There we go. So we now attach our sheet rope. If we've got it. Do I have a sheet rope? No, oh, silly. I used it I used it here, that's why. We'll go and get some more. Sheets uh, come in, in, in plentiful supplies. The one, the one resource in the game that you'll always have plenty of is, uh, is of course, zombies. And um, if you're, once you become a, a good player, you'll be killing them in the hundreds. You can see I'll probably kill close to 50 or 60 just two days in. And there we go. So I now have a means of getting inside the building. Now, if this is, was your second night, what I would suggest you do is go around here and actually kill all of the zombies that are closest to your base, and that will let you let you sleep a little bit easier. If you're only a few days into the game, you're probably not going to have too much trouble with zombies. Let's let's use our remaining planks to barricade these windows. There you go. So we've now got a pretty secure base. These two doors will hold up against a couple of zombies. The windows are blocked. Everything's blocked. And most importantly, we have a rope ladder up to the second level. So this isn't too bad. And this is why I select a base that's multi-story. And it only has a few entrances. You wouldn't want to be wasting hundreds of nails having to to block up if this was all all glass you'd have to you'd have to have you know three or four boxes of nails um, and it's, it's too wasteful so this is even better in that it's a, it's a three story building the other reason why I chose this building is obvious because you can create a farm here and that's what we're going to do we're going to have a farm on this roof because when winter comes we want to try and have be self-sufficient and I want to try and have some potato crops so that's it for a second episode of our 
Project Zomboy tutorial series. This has been barricading and base defense, basic base defense. I've shown you how to block up entrances um, with wooden wooden log walls. I've showed you how to barricade windows and doors. And finally, I've shown you a little bit of basic weapons crafting. That's something that we're going to go into in a future episode. Wooden stakes are one of many weapons you can make with the Hydrocraft mod. I've just showed you one particular thing. But and on, on the first few days, you probably... I, I, I would suggest you don't be relying on weapon crafting. Try and find yourself a decent weapon like a machete or a baseball bat. Baseball bats are quite good. They, they're good against large hordes because when you swing you'll actually hit multiple zombies at once. And knives of course are easily found in the kitchen. A butter knife will do in a pinch because that will kill three or four zombies before it breaks. A box cutter. There's multiple different stabbing weapons you can find in the game. And this is something you want to try and do once you actually select where you want to settle. You want to try and start start barricading and making the base reasonably safe to sleep in because in the next coming month you're going to have to start searching the surrounding area to fill your base with supplies to, to keep you going through the winter. At the moment we only have a little bit of water, we've got a little bit of water here and we have a bit of food in the downstairs fridge but what we're going to have to do in future episodes is we're going to have to go out and scavenge and start start filling this base with supplies. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it um, educational. I know people have really been enjoying this series, but because of um, substandard recording equipment and my own um, very limited uh, knowledge in video editing, the first episodes and the series and also the fact that I did get some stuff wrong. I, I wasn't happy with the first tutorial series. Um, hopefully this one is a little bit better. If you like this video, please subscribe. It would be nice to, to actually <laughs> see if people are actually are actually enjoying this and, and, and watching beyond the few that have, have uh, I suppose, have contacted me. And... Shameless self-plug, I've done another series on Resident Evil 4, a Let's Play, um, if you know you guys would like to have a look at those. And also my other videos would be great, so it seems like only the Project Zomboid videos really people are looking at, but it would be nice to see what people's opinions are. And um, we're going to try something different in the comments section below, in addition to all your wonderful comments, um, please let me know what, uh, which ones of my videos you have liked and disliked. And um, it would be nice because I am starting to get a bit, I wouldn't say sick of projects on board, but I would like to try and start another series just to break up the uh, break up the gameplay to a few different games. But if you, it, it would be nice to see if you guys are enjoying some of the games that I'm playing apart from projects on board. Anyway, that's it. Um, see you in the next episode. Skill Incarnate out.